Hey guys, welcome back. Steve here from graphicdesignertips.com. In today's video tutorial, I'm going to be going over exactly how to build what you're seeing on the screen right now, which is a two-sided business card for a client of mine. Now, you're seeing four artboards on here, and the reason being is because I wanted to give the client a two different options to choose from, which ultimately we went with the top two, the top left and the top right. But I want to show you how to build all of this. In turn, you're going to learn how to set artboards and then save them correctly. But in this tutorial, you're going to learn about everything from starting the, the whole piece. We're going to do some stuff with the uh, superimposition of the book right here with the perspective, the image over here on the bottom right. And I'm going to show you how to set these up for for final printing with added bleed and and saving everything correctly. All right, so we're going to start off in Adobe Photoshop CC 2014. And we're going to do a couple things to the images in here first to prepare them for Adobe Illustrator. So the very first thing we're going to do with this image is we're going to come up the file, excuse me, image mode, and we're going to change that to CMYK color. We're going to just hit OK on that. And we're going to come up to image image size and we're going to check a couple things right here all right so i already reset this earlier so it's basically telling me at 300 resolution which is where you want it to be this image is going to look the very best at three and a half inches by 2.2 inches in height and that's perfect because a business card is basically that size so it's showing us we have a two and a half megabyte file which is very small so we're going to hit okay because i am satisfied with that we're now going to come and we're going to save this as house one, name it as a Photoshop document, and I'm going to put it right on my desktop. Okay, so the next image we have in Photoshop is an image of a blank book that I purchased as a stock photo. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to add the cover on that book, which is on this tab in Adobe Photoshop. And basically, I am going to Take the marquee tool and I'm going to marquee the entire thing. I'm going to go to edit, copy, or command C, like we're always used to. And we're going to come into this document right here. Now, very simply, we're going to, before we paste that on here, again, let's make sure the image mode is CMYK color. And we're going to make sure that the image size is proper for what we're trying to do. Four by four, 300, a little bit big, but it's okay in this case. We'll leave it. The next thing we're going to do is we are going to paste the part that we copied a couple steps back. So now that is this is on a new layer, we are going to go to Command T or Edit, Free Transform, and we're going to scale this down just a little bit. All right, so the width is pretty much this similar to the width of the book, pretty much where it needs to go. So now we're going to hit OK. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to come back and edit transform and we're going to come down to distort. And this is where you can basically grab these points and pull them up. Let me move that whole thing down a little bit. We're going to pull them where they need to go. Okay, now the beauty about this is the book is going to print so small in the business card that even if you don't get this 100% perfect on here, nobody's going to notice. But the goal is to get it pretty perfect. All right, so now we're going to hit OK. We are now going to go to File, Save As, and we're going to save it as superimposedbook.psd. And we're going to hit OK. Now we are back in Adobe Illustrator CC 2014, and the first thing we're going to do is we're going to set our document up correctly. We are going to come up to File, New, and we are going to just name this test for right now, and we're going to make the number of artboards four. And don't worry about the spacing right now. We can mess around with this later. Um, we're going to make the size. We're going to change the units to inches. And the general size for a business card is three and a half inches in width by two inches in height. Now, the very last thing we're going to want to do is click this little arrow up here to add some bleed. We want to add 0.125 indicator of bleed. So then in the end, we're going to add that for our file. And then under the advanced tab, you're going to see CMYK and 300 pixels per inch. That's what you need to set it as. And you're going to hit OK. On the screen right now, we have our four artboards that we set up. And the black area is the artboard. The red area is the bleed 
where you're going to extend the bleed to. Now, everything between the black and the red area is going to cut off. So you want to plan for that. Now I have pasted everything in, so I kind of have a reference point on, on what my old files were because although this tutorial is going to be between 20 and 30 minutes, in real time and in real world, this stuff is going to take way more than that. So there's going to be a lot of refining in the end. This actually came after a couple of revisions, so the originals look a touch different from these. And the very first thing we're going to do is we're going to make this, well, actually, let's turn these guides off for now because we're going to add the bleed in the end. We're going to go to View guides hide guides or command semicolon and the next thing we're going to do is we're going to come up to the rectangle and now we're going to click and we're going to type out three and a half by two and now if you do not see inches after this you can come up to illustrator preferences and units and you can change that in there to inches if you're on pixels right now and what we're going to do with this is we're going to actually fill this with 15 percent gray so i'm going to come into my black up here and i'm just going to type in 15 so put that in there right there and the very next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come into my ellipse tool. I'm going to draw an ellipse and we're going to fill it with white. Okay. So now you have what looks like this. The very next thing we're going to do is we're going to come up and do effect blur, Gaussian blur. And we're going to set it to about 60 pixels. And we're going to hit preview to see what it's going to look like. A little bit more. And we're going to hit OK. We're going to click off and now we got our background that is well, I'm going to actually pull this a little bit closer so it fades out more so it looks more natural. Okay, cool. So that is going to be the background. It's going to have that soft feel that, you know, it, it kind of plays tricks with your eyes if it's if it's um, if it's a solid color or not, but it, it just looks very nice nonetheless. But what you next want to do is let's see, did we do that here? Okay, cool. All right, I'm going to group this or so select both of those and hit command G. All right, now we're going to hit option click and we're going to shift, hold shift while we shift it over. And the same thing with this. Now, the one on the bottom right does not have that, and that's okay because the image took up most of that. What we're now going to do is we are going to take the logo right here. This is the finalized logo that I designed for the client. So obviously, I'm following the color scheme of the blue, the blue to dark blue, and the consulting group is in that in that gray so then we you know use obviously gray in our text over here which we're about to get to so we're going to put the logo right here we're going to come up to object range bring to front now if it helps out at all come into your layers and create a new layer I don't use layers rarely and I say this in every tutorial because I learned to unlock and lock elements using the keyboard command shortcuts it's much easier uh, command 2 and then shift command 2 is to unlock all so what you want to do is you want to select all these right now. We're going to move them to that layer, the layer we just created. And we're going to actually now pull that layer to the back. We're going to rename it background. And we're going to now lock it so we can't mess around with that gray accidentally. Now that we have our logo on top of the background, what we're going to do is we're going to come up to our reference point right here. That We're going to make sure it's in the middle, the reference point, and on the X value, Basically, the X goes across the horizontal way. So you need to take three and a half and divide it by two, which is one, well, excuse me, in half, which is 1.75. All right. And that is going to center the logo exactly in there. Now, this logo is a little bit top left heavy. So there might be an instance where I might nudge this over one or two to the right just because it's just a uh, kind of a visual thing. So Next thing we're going to do is we are going to come into here and we're going to select a rectangle and we're going to just click down, hold down and drag over. All right. It's a little bit too high. Cool. And literally we're just going to sample that blue. So if you don't have that blue, you're going to have to make it in your gradient and we're going to come into the eyedropper tool and we're going to select the, the green, the blue right there, excuse me. And we're going to take the gradient tool or G on the keyboard and we're going to literally click from the bottom, hold shift and go to the top. Okay, so that actually gave us a different effect because the gradient goes the other way. So let's flip it around, click at the top, hold shift, and now pull it to the bottom. So the darker area is on the bottom. Very next thing we're going to do is we're going to click the text tool, and we are going to type out www.habercg.com, which is a website that I designed for my client. And I am going to, number one, put it right here. I'm going to turn it white. 
I'm going to center it just like we did the other element. So that's 1.75, okay? And now what we're gonna do is, I don't like how that website is so small, but over here, the text mod size is only 13.62. So let's just say we make this 14. I'm going to, okay, so what? here's another thing. Make sure your paragraph is aligned through the center because if it is not aligned through the center, then anytime you make an adjustment to it, it's going to push it to the left or to the right. So we have to come back in here and then redo that positioning. Now, anything we do to this, watch, if we make it larger, it goes right through the center. So we'll come back to 14 points. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna nudge it down a little bit and we're gonna come up into our character and we're gonna come up into the tracking. We're just gonna add some tracking in it so we get it to where we like it. I actually wanted it to extend the logo a little bit so because I didn't want the logo to be huge on this on that side of the card. Okay, so that's that one side. Next thing we're gonna do is, and this is how you do it if you're doing other ideas for your client. Okay, you finish your first one, now you're gonna option click, you're gonna shift this one down, and we're gonna shift these two things down, option, option copies everything, do that in all the videos I do. Actually, let's fix this real quick, we'll nudge that over on the line segment a on the keyboard and we're going to change that to real estate donations and hit escape okay so now we have our two fronts and i can get rid of them over here actually excuse me you know what i just realized something we use a different logo because i took real estate donations out of the tag out of the logo i put it underneath and then on the on that option, we took the web address off and put it on the other side. So let me delete that logo and put the correct one in. All right. And now that it weighs a lot better, meaning that it's it, it works better in there larger because of the fact that there's no tagline under it and you don't have to make room for that. Now what we're going to do is we're going to find those two images that we did in the beginning and we're going to come up the file and we're going to place those images we're going to find them on our desktop they are right here and we're going to hit place very simple we're gonna have one and two go right there all right so the very next thing that we are going to do is we are going to shrink this right here we're gonna hold shift while we do this all right till it gets into where we want it to be and you can either take the white out in Photoshop or you can come into your transparency and hit multiply and you're going to see that all that uh, white it shows through basically so and you even have the shadow of the book still which is pretty cool. So we're going to just scale that a little bit and probably refine a little bit more later on. Um, but the next thing I want to do is I'm going to pull this image in here. And OK, so you see how the image is hanging off of the canvas right now. I want to always allow for that bleed area. So if I turn my my uh, guides back on, because if the client approves it and then all of a sudden you didn't put it outside for the bleed, now you're going to have to cut up more of that image. You see what I'm doing right now? Now it's going to kind of to cut out even more of the image than the client actually saw on it, on their proof. So what you want to do is you want to get it in that area. We're going to make a box around it. We're just going to clip it out, make it a clipping mask for now. We're going to right click and make clipping mask. All right, and I'm going to turn my gu my guides off so it's back here now. Uh, what I'm now going to do is I am going to check what I did last time. Let's see. Okay. We're going to change that opacity to 40% on that image, and that's what it's going to look like, identical to the other one. And now what we're going to do is we're going to come into our text tool. Dennis Haber. We're going to hit escape on this. We're going to hit character. And we're going to now take the tracking off. We're going to set it to zero. And we're going to change this font to Trahan Pro. It's so funny. My last two, three tutorials have had this font in it. Um, most of the time, I don't select this on my own. They, they choose it. So that's okay. Let's see. I am going to... I'm now going to select this gradient. Watch this. I'm going to select the gradient. I'm going to come into it. I'm going to see what it's made up of. Light blue and dark blue. I'm going to take that light blue, right? Well, not really light, but lighter. I'm going to drag it into my swatches. I'm going to take that dark blue, drag it into my swatches so now I can use them. I'm going to click on his name, the client, and I'm going to turn that to blue. I'm going to change it bold. because I believe it is bold over here. Bold 13 points. All right. Cool. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to option click, shift this down. 
write president and hit escape. We're gonna come up to Myriad Pro Italics. And let's see, just to make it identical, 80% black, which is actually right here also. And the font size is 10. Okay, next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna write the email address down. Actually, they wanted the CG capital and the, and the H lowercase, I remember that. All right, so we're gonna now leave that regular. left justify all these text boxes too. A left justify and then hit the align horizontal align left tool to align everything. Cool. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to come up into our line segment tool. We're going to make a line. We're not going to make it have have it go past that word.com and we're going to I'm just going to sample it. What I did, it was a stroke of half a point and it was actually that blue again. And next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna, I like to just keep copying text boxes. It saves, you know, a lot of time. Um, I'm actually gonna make one of these. So I'm gonna bold this. I'm gonna make it blue. I'm gonna make it, let's see how many points is that gonna be? 12 point, 12 point, 12 point. All right, cool. I'm gonna copy that over and we're gonna type out 516 we're gonna hit escape. We're gonna now change that to regular and we're gonna change that to that 80% gray, just like the ones above. We're now gonna select those two and we're gonna option click shift, option click shift. Now, if you're wondering, oh, well, you know, you're saying to yourself, well, how do you know those are perfectly spaced apart? I know they're perfectly spaced apart because if they're not, I'm going to refine a little bit and pull it up. But if, it, if they are, you'll be able to tell by literally just your eye uh, over time on this stuff. So uh, I'm going to, what is it, facts and which am I looking at? Oh, P C F. Right, I'm not even going to worry about changing the other numbers so you get the gist. All right, option click, shift that line. We're going to copy it again. It's a nice little thing to break up the area. And I'm just going to copy this over because it's a text box. And I purposely put Sweet 20 going to here because if I did it, it'd be a huge, huge error, just kind of a hole right there. Plus it needed to be Sweet 20 because that's the actual address. If I start to increase the book size, um, which will work actually in this case, but I don't want my stuff too close to the edge. So I'm gonna move that a little bit. And very, very simply, I am going to select all this stuff. Actually, don't forget the piece C and F. And I'm going to option click. I'm going to shift it down. So look how quickly I just made another version of this of this um, address uh, card. Excuse me. I'm going to hit escape now. And let's see what did I do in here? I may have cheated a little bit. I don't squeeze text often, but sometimes you got to either squeeze text, which is a big no-no or you're gonna take the tracking out. So you know what, let me back up. I don't wanna squeeze that, teach you bad things. Um, we're going to take the tracking and we're gonna make that minus 25, okay? Let's make sure that's in the front. I actually think I left that black, okay. I left it black because it was getting lost right there, so 100% black. And I'm literally just gonna copy this web address over. And to be safe, you can copy all this stuff Except for the image, you would click the image and hit Command-2 to lock it. Select all this stuff and left justify. Oh, okay. All right, so these are all separate, so you need to select these. Hit Command-G to group them. Select all the elements. Hit left alignment, not left justify. justify and let's see. And now we have our pieces. So what we're going to do is we're going to come up into the background again. We're going to unlock that because we're ready to get going on this thing and save it for print. We are going to click one, two, the circles in the middle, three, and we're going to hit literally command two because we don't want to select them accidentally in this process right now. We're going to select, okay, we are going to all right, so you know what? Forget it. Unlock everything. So go to Object, unlock all, and let's start again. We're going to select the book. We're going to hit Command-2. We're going to lock it. We're going to select this circle, lock it. 
lock it, lock it. Okay. The reason this is happening is because I grouped the whole entire back. So let's see if I do this. Okay. We need to right click and ungroup all three of these. One, two, three, and now it's going to work. We're going to select the book, Command 2. We're going to select one, hold Shift, two, three, and then Command 2 to lock. Now we got our background and we're able to select it. So hit A on your keyboard and hover over both of these points and with your guides on, which I just did with Command semicolon or if you were paying attention earlier, view guides. You could show the guides if they're hidden. We're going to nudge this over till it hits that red line. Okay, you can go over that red line if you'd like. You don't need to in this case though. Same thing with the top. Same thing with the left. And you know what I'm going to do here just to save some time? I am going to, I just unlocked everything, Shift Command 2. Uh, we're going to delete this, 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 and this. And I'm literally just going to, okay, I'm going to select both of these throughout the book. And I'm going to copy those over. And I copy it down. Because I'm going to be here for a little bit. And we don't want to. Okay, so we are not done yet. We still have a couple more things to do. We're going to now select this. We're going to hit Command 2. We're going to lock it. Same thing with these. Now we have to add the bottom banners, bleeds. So we're going to hit A on our keyboard. We can hover over all four of these points. All right, see, we're doing two at a time. That's pretty cool. Same thing with the right side. And the bottom. Lastly, we're going to open up this image. We're going to literally click on the line segment with the direct selection, the white tool, or hitting A on the keyboard to get it. We're going to select that line, and we're opening up that clipping mask that we created earlier. Remember I said we're going to want to leave room for the end? Because if your client approves it, like I said, and then, oh, crap, I didn't put any bleed on it, they might get a little pissed if you cut out a specific part of the image. Or even if they, they're not really upset about that, they're going to wonder why you didn't listen or why it looks different than the proof you know that's going to kind of get them aggravated the very last thing that we are going to do is we are going to select all we're going to actually excuse me object unlock all we're going to now select all command a on our keyboard we're going to go to type create outlines so we outline everything and we're now going to go to file save as i'm going to just name this test for the purpose of the tutorial all right, we're going to save it to the desktop, hit save. Right now, I'm just going to hit a high quality print marks. I'm going to set the trim marks. I'm going to hit this up arrow to add the bleed to the PDF. And now we have saved our PDF. We are now in our PDF reader and on the screen, you're going to see the first artboard. Now, if we come into our pages right here, you're going to see now there's four pages. So it did one. And you're going to notice all the crop marks are in there and all the bleed is in there. Very nice. Two, three, and four. All right. And now those are our four PDFs that we're going to send our client. And you can even break the PDFs up into separate ones and say, or say, you know, page one and two or, or three and four is, is this different design or, or whatever. So it just makes it very organized. And that's exactly how you want to send it to your client and have them even forward this to their printer. So if you like what you learned in this episode, definitely like the video and please comment below. Very important. A lot of work and planning goes into each of these videos. And I do my best to try to teach you uh, new things and obviously repetitive things over and over just because it's the type of things that you're going to be doing all the time. Um, and definitely share this out on your social networks. Let your friends, colleagues, and classmates know. Uh, that graphic designer tips and Steve Looney is the place to go for great layout design tutorials and hit the subscribe button, click it on the screen to subscribe to my videos and get them before anybody else does. And that's it, everybody. My name is Steve Looney from graphicdesignertips.com. I appreciate you taking the time to watch my video and I'm hoping you learned and I hope you have a great night. All right, everybody. Take care. Peace.